So what if you get all the directories for model, view and controller without actually creating it? Yes, that's possible with Laravel because it comes with so many files and directories pre-handed when you install it on your system. I know that's a little overwhelming and confusing at the same time. But trust me, it's not that difficult to understand and you will get familiar with it as we will make progress in this series. So in this video, we will be walking through these directories one by one. So watch the video till the end and do give the thumbs up so that it reaches out to all the learners out there. So let's dig into it. Hello there, this is Neha from Webstack. Welcome to another video on Laravel series. And before getting started, if you are new here, make sure you click on that big subscribe button and do hit the bell icon to get all the new updates from me. So as we can see, these directories and files that are already present inside a project called Lara app that we created in the last video. So in case you have not seen that video, make sure you follow that and the link is provided in the description box below and also you can hit the link on the screen. So these are the different directories present and I have opened this project in VS Code Editor. So let us go through them one by one and check out where the model, view and controller and all other necessary files are stored. So let's check out the very first directory that we have is called app directory. So it will actually contain the core code of your application as well as the models and all the classes that you will be creating in your project. So as you can see there is already a file available called user.php. This is actually the model provided for the user table. So you will get to know it later in the series. And also if I check there is console, exceptions, HTTP and providers directory. So in, from these, uh, out of these we will be using HTTP directory the most because it contains the controller directory. Inside it there is already a file called controller.php. So this is a by default file provided but whatever controllers we will be creating in the project will be stored inside this directory. So if I move on to the next directory which is called bootstrap. So this is the directory which first gets loaded when your application runs in the browser. So the file which gets loaded is called app.php file which actually contains the code so that your application gets started. So we never ever change the code inside this file. So if I talk about next directory that is called config which actually stores all the configuration files and also the mail and the queue services that were required is also configured in these configuration files. So the next directory that we have after config is called database. Now if I check out this database directory we have some important directories inside it like factories, migrations and seeds. So factories is nothing but it contains the data and migrations folder will have all the tables which you will be creating in the project. So already these two files are there which is free uh, provided like it is already provided by the Laravel to you. And also we have a file called git ignore. This file will actually help you to ignore the files while it's uploading the project on the GitHub. So if you are working in a team with multiple people and you are sharing the project on git so it will always uh, ignore these files and it will not upload or hide these files whenever you will be uploading the project on the git. So moving on to the next folder that we have is called public directory. So in public directory we all know the importance of it as it contains all the files like javascript, css but for the security reason we cannot put those files inside this directory. So we prefer to put it inside resources folder. So public folder will contain index.php and we never change this file because this is the starting point of our application 
after app.php gets loaded. So the next directory we have is resources uh, in which we will store all the JS and CSS files. Also it will contain one folder called lang which actually stores your language files and what do you mean by that is if you want your website to be a multilingual website you need to store all the translation files inside it. So that's the use of lang folder and also we have a very important directory that we are going to use in every project and program will be views directory. So in this directory we, we will contain all the blade templates for our web pages. So now all the website structure will be stored inside the very important directory that we have is called routes directory. This will actually contain the files which will define all the structure of your website and the linkings of all the web pages. So it contains api.php, channels, console, web.php. So this api.php is required when you are using mobile app. So you will provide all the routings in this file. And if you are using the web app, web applications, then you need to define the routes inside this web.php file. And also the next directory that we have is called storage, which actually contains the logs. So we will uh, not be using it much. The next directory if I check is called test, uh, which is actually used for unit testing. That is a very important feature in Laravel. We will be looking to it in the very end of the session. Uh, I'll show you some testing how to do that. So at that time we will be using the test cases and I'll show you how to run these test cases automatically. So the next uh, directory that we have is called vendors which actually contains all the packages that we install and all the plugins. So the composer which actually is used to install the packages so we can just uh, keep those packages and the plugins inside this vendors folder. So as you can see some of the uh, like packages that are there are called facades, then we have Laravel, then we have uh, Faker as well, right? We have Mockery. So all these packages are available. Apart from these directories, we also have some files available globally. Uh, one of the important files that we have is called .env. So if I see this file, now it contains some important, you can say environment variables. So this actually contains the details of your project, like your application name, key and URL. Also the database uh, configurations like host, port, database name, the drivers, the mailer, access key and all your important information. We also have one more file called .env.example. This is much of the same file. It is a copy of .env. So the changes we will be making in .env file will not be reflected in this file. So we can use this .env.example in case my previous file gets lost or it gets modified, uh, uncertain uh, modification is there. So we can just simply use .env.example as a backup file. So the next thing that we have is called .editor config. It simply tells the editor what kind of uh, configurations it needs to use. So we just need to uh, know this thing only and we will never be changing it. You can delete it if you want. Then we have like git attributes, git ignore as we have already discussed git ignore. This will ignore all the files that are mentioned inside this directory. So in this as uh, you can see there is written .env. So whenever you will be uploading the project, you never want that your passwords and your key encryptions should be and all the configurations should be uploaded also and it should be visible publicly. So what this will do is it will ignore the .env file and it will keep it hidden and it will not upload that with the project. So we also have artisan file that actually is very important because whenever you are using artisan CLI, it provides you with thousands of commands that you can use in the project. So for that we use this artisan file which contains the code. We will never be touching this code uh, so that uh, nothing wrong happens with the project. 
And the next thing we have is composer.json which actually keeps the track of the packages that you are installing for PHP. And also there is a lock version for it. That is nothing but a lock version. Uh, then next we have package.json which will actually store the dependencies of npm. So if you are including your Laravel with npm or node, if you are connecting the two, then you can store the packages and track it using package.json file. So if you want to get into the details of all these files and directories, then you can refer to the documentation which is provided by Laravel itself. So that's it for this video guys. If you like the content, please hit the like button and do mention a thumbs up in a comment section below. And also share and subscribe to the channel. Do hit the bell icon to get all the latest updates from me. So see you in the next video.